can go ahead with the statement. Be advised that proper notice has been given by the Township Council in accordance with the Sunshine Law in the following manner. Notice advertised in the Burlington County Times and Camden Carrier Post on January 7th, 2021 and posted on the bulletin board on the same date. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Here. Ms. Pareo? Here. Mr. Lyon? Here. Mr. Burrell? Here. All right, we'll get right into it. We have our consent agenda. This is for resolution 2021 dash 22 all the way to resolution 24. Can I have a motion, please? Summit. Second. Second. Was that Tom? Lynn. Lynn, okay. <laughs> Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Sorry, Virginia, I didn't hear you. Sorry, I. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Okay, next we have our ordinances on first reading. Looks like there's only one, and that's Ordinance 2021 03. It's a bond ordinance authorizing this stormwater repairs on Stewart Ave for some of 7,000, 75,000. Yes, 75,000. We don't need a public hearing on this, so I'll ask for a motion and a second, please. I'll make that motion, Tom Lyon. I'll second, Marlo Smith. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? I think Virginia froze. Oh, we lost her. Oh. Hey, Virginia. Can you hear us? Yeah, I was kicked off. I don't know what was going on, I think, with my Wi-Fi. I apologize. That's all right. We're at the, um, we're going through the roll call for ordinance 2021-03. So you're up. Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Next, we have our motions. Um, a motion authorizing the payment of bills, including all purchases made under the cooperative purchasing agreement. Looking for a motion? So moved. And a second. Second, Lynn. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Next, we have a motion granting a mercantile license to Bigwood Custom Painting. So moved. Second, Lynn. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. And the motion carries. Next, we have our work session portion of today's agenda. Uh, so first up, we have the floating holidays. Let's get to that page. Uh, the memo is from Jeff. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Jeff, there's really, we just need to authorize this to move forward. It's in the um, the uh, contract with the CWA, the collective bargaining agreement with the CWA provides for two floating holidays per year um, that we have to give consent on. They've submitted. I don't have a problem with either one of the days they've submitted. Okay, great. You know, seeing that Jeff, you know, as the administrator has no problem with those days uh, and it won't impact the operations of the township, um, I think the council should consider moving forward with that. Any Thoughts or objections? Jeff, do you need a roll call or a motion from us or? Uh, like to, yeah, a formal a vote on it. Sal, is that a motion? Or... I, I, I just don't know your con. I mean, if you're asking for a formal vote, then yes, okay, let's ask for a motion in a second and uh, and Jamie will put it in the next number. I'm just, I'm not that familiar with the contract, whether uh, council has to review and approve it, but. Uh, if you if you want to vote on it, yeah, let's let's have a motion. So that'll be. Uh, yeah, we'll just do a motion. We don't need a number on it. It's not a resolution. No, we, we do need a, we do need a number. If you're going to memorialize it, so you'll be at twenty six. Maybe we have twenty six for the next resolution. Uh, well, the executive session is number 26, 25. So I I I would think we use twenty six for this motion. 
Sal, is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So a motion to, uh, it's, it's a resolution to approve these um, CWA floating holidays as written in Jeff's memo. Can I get a motion in a second, please? So motion. I'll second. second. Yeah. You got that, Jamie? <laughs> I heard Tom and Marlo, I think. That's correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. All right, next up we have the uh, mosquito control. This is pretty standard. I think we do this every year. Um, they're just looking for our authorization to move forward with it. Uh, Jeff, any, any other thoughts on this? I'm sorry, did that freeze up? I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, I was just it, saying this is pretty pretty yeah. standard stuff for us. Is there you know anything we need to consider beyond what was provided? No, we do this annually. Um, the county asked for authorization uh, from us in order to sign this and move it forward to the county to do the aerial spraying for mosquitoes. Okay, great. So since it's pretty standard, I'm what do you need from us, Jeff? Does this go on the public agenda? Um, it, it hasn't in the past, but if you want to do a resolution tonight approving it, that'd be fine. Okay, that's that's good. So I'm seeking a motion for resolution 27, uh, approving us to enter into this uh, authorization with the county for the area aerial mosquito control. So moved. moved. Virginia, you can take it, and then uh, uh, Lynn, you want to have the second? Second. That's fine. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. All right, next up we have the road opening permit for the water main replacement. And Jim, I'm going to kick the ball over to you if you don't mind. Hey, no problem. Um, this is more of an advisory, but there are some action we'll, we'll need from you. Uh, New Jersey American Water uh, submitted for the road opening permit application. Um, they actually sent out an email, I think yesterday or today about, I don't know if everybody got that as more, you know, information. It's a very big project. Uh, we've been talking about this probably over the last year. Um, New Jersey American Water, in addition to PCNG, is replacing um, a lot of their mains in the one section of town. I think it's like over, you know, 14,000 feet, plus or minus. Um, we've been waiting for this. Uh, they had to wait for the budget year 2021 to get this work done. It's good. Uh, once they complete their main... Uh, reconstruction they're going to follow up with um, resurfacing of certain roads in combination with PSCNG resurfacing some roads and then you are also resurfacing uh, Baylor um, that's kind of like a tri-party agreement we have so the <clears throat> the application needs your approval because there are two roads that they're opening up Howard and Fordham that are technically under moratorium um, because PCNG paved them actually like three or four years ago <clears throat> when they did their main replacements then. Fortunately, we asked New Jersey American Water to do their work back then, but they said they didn't need to, but things have changed. Uh, so we are recommending that waiver be granted to allow them to do that work. Once they um, do that main, they'll be resurfacing half those roads as well. Um, and then also, uh, one thing we need to discuss is P neither PCNG or New Jersey American Water have a, have a bond with the township. Uh, sometimes waive this requirement because they tend to, you know, have a, I guess, like a partner. A, 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 it's just because they're big firms. They don't sometimes don't need to post bonds to guarantee that they come back for restoration. Um, they've been pretty good at coming back for restoration these days, especially now that they have this policy where they reserve of half the road. So uh, it's up to the council to determine. The ordinance allows for the posting of a bond uh, to make sure that they complete the work if necessary for these two entities. Most other uh, road opening permits done by smaller individuals, they they post a deposit to make sure that they can restore the work. Uh, like, so there's a question whether or not that's something we want to apply to either PSCNG or New Jersey American Water in the future. Um, so that's really it. It's just that we need, I guess, a, a, I don't know if it's a resolution to waive the moratorium for Fordham and Howard, and I guess a, a policy decision on whether or not we should let PSC&G or require a bonds posting from PSC&G or New Jersey American Water. We have it for PSC&G and they, what their work is generally done. Um, just bring it up now for New Jersey American Water. And uh, just to recap, the work should be done with the mains uh, this spring. They want to start actually in a couple of weeks. 
So first they do redo all the mains, then they come back and do everybody's service. Um, and then they had let, had let it sit a little bit for settlement and then it'll be resurfacing. So we're expecting all the resurfacing to get done about late summer, early fall. Okay. So, so there's two questions. One is opening up the uh, moratorium. Then the second is the bond issue, correct? Yes. Okay. And the, I don't really see a problem with the road moratorium because they're going to be fixing the road back up, correct? Yes. I mean, th there's not going to be a gaping hole in it anymore, you know, after, after they, they fix it in the spring. So I, I don't have an issue with that. Does, does any of the council have any thoughts or issues with that? I, I, excuse me, Jim, on the, um, uh, the paperwork, I guess, or the documents that you share between PSE and G or we share, is there a written, a, a written indication that they're going to repave it? A commitment uh from them? We have, I have like emails uh, with PSCNG and uh, and uh, the water company and the two individuals that are, are uh, you know, responsible parties for that, that have basically, it's not like a formal contract, like written out contract, but we have clear emails that designate everybody's responsibility and what they're going to do and follow through with it. PSCNG already started repaving some of their roads. Um, and we and they but they couldn't do all of them because the southern roads they couldn't pave were the ones that New Jersey American Water is coming in to do the um, uh, do the main still. So uh, no, we don't have like a written contract, but we have what we have in writing from them is emails with a, with a clear understanding of this is everybody's responsibility and the condition of the permits. Could we in when we send them the approval, if we grant them the approval for the waiver, can we um, just uh, memorialize in a letter that they're going to be doing these things? Yes, I could do that. So in, in the second issue is the bond issue. You said we already waived that for, for one of the folks and then we didn't waive it for American Water? Uh, it was not required of PC and g when they got their road opening permits last year. It's not required as a policy decision or per the ordinance? Uh, I, it was more of like a policy decision, to be honest with you. I don't know if we discussed it. Yeah, Just, I, I don't think we did. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's a more of a question for, for legal or Jeff. I mean, do we need, are you concerned if they don't post bond for, for this improvement? I mean, the preference would be that they post a bond. Jim, will they post the bond or is it their, their policy that they don't? Uh, no, if we ask them for it, I'm sure we can get it. All right. Well, why don't we? I don't see why we wouldn't do that anyway. Um, and you know, if it becomes an issue, um, you know, we can bring it back to council and and discuss. But I think, you know, unless council has any other objections, I think we should ask. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask and, and see if they'll do it anyway. Well, I don't think we have to ask. I think we can just enforce it. So okay. I'll reach out to um, Michelle tomorrow, who is the. Uh, the, the project manager for New Jersey American Water, and I'll help put together a bond and submit it. And we'll, we'll make it a bond that's a reasonable amount and it'll be just stay on file so we have it for all the future road open permit applications. And I'll reach out to PC and G and I'll let them know moving forward that they're going to need to post a, a standing bond with the town. I, yeah. I like the fact that we stay consistent with all everybody. Yeah, I, I noticed that we didn't do it for PC and G, but I don't want to do it again for New Jersey American Water before bringing it to you guys. Yeah, yeah, I think it makes sense. I mean, it's on the ordinance. Let's follow it to a T uh, before we start changing it, making exceptions. And then, you know, five years down the road, we have all these exceptions that we're granting. Yeah, I mean, the ordinance does say that the council can waive it. It's not like it's clear that like you have to postpone. It's like subject to council. Less. If the council cho chooses to do so, they can require bond. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we should require it. Uh, this is a substantial amount of roads that they're getting done. So. I think council, right? We all we all agree with that. I'm seeing a bunch of shaking heads. So I agree. Okay. Okay. okay great. Um, and are, are we okay to grant the moratorium? I mean, to waive the moratorium on those two roads? I think everybody. I, I'm fine with it as long as they're going to repave curb to curb. Yeah, Jim. They're, they're, the plan was to do half width if if they were going to stay on their half of the road. If they go over the half line, then do the full curb to curb. Yeah. So so anything, Jim, right? Anything that they're disturbing on that half of the road, that whole half will be done. It's not like we're going to have 
uh, you know, a six mile strip of, you know, six inches that runs down the whole length. No, it would be the, it'd be center line to curb provided all their main work and their services stay completely on the one side of the road. If they do one service on the opposite side of the road, then they do full curb to curb. Go ahead, Virginia. Yes, and g did work on Arch and they paved it curb to curb and it looks great. So that's an indication of what they're gonna do in the future and what American, New Jersey American Water is gonna do. I mean, it looks great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Generally, I mean, it, it's yeah, it's different contractors will be doing it, but yeah, generally that will match. I thought Arch was half width, but I'll double check. No, they, they, did curb to, they did the whole. Yeah, I think we ended up making them do curb to curb because they had a service on the other side. They were supposed to really originally only supposed to do half, and when they ended up doing their services, they had to put a hole in on the opposite side of the road, so then it went full curb to curb. Right, they didn't do the full length of the road, but they did do curb to curb where they did it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and for, um, you know, the newer council members and, and the public, you know, we've been working on this for a couple, I think it's been about a year and a half, um, where, you know, the these vendors, or not vendors, utilities, uh, PSC and g and American Water are going to disturb the road, right, which most of these roads are in okay shape, uh, but we're getting completely resurfaced roads out of this, and all we have to do is you know, sign a couple pieces of paper uh, and, you know, Jim has to oversee some of this. So, you know, we're really making out um, fairly well out of this deal. And, and Jim, what's, do you have the number, the total amount of roads that are going to get completed because of this project in, in whole? Yeah, it's a lot. Um, yeah. I don't know, I don't know the mileage off my head, but if you add in all the, all the work that PCNG did and all the work that New Jersey American Water did now and in the past, I mean, it's, it's miles, not mile or less. I mean, when you do a road program, it's less than a mile. It's you're maybe doing like a half a mile to, to maybe three quarters of a mile. Now you're getting like five miles, I think. Right. So like that. Yeah. Um, one thing about that though, we do need the, the re, this resurfacing of the half width of the road is really a, what they're just offering to do and, and, and sort of a policy, but it's not on the books right now for uh, your road opening permits. So that's one thing we should probably look at. I mean, so we're, we're not, it's for the future in case it, in that they, the utility companies change their policy and say, hey, look, we don't want to do this anymore, which I doubt, but just in case we should look to maybe update the road opening permit ordinance to say if your linear openings require, you know, full or half width resurfacing, you know, along the limits of their, you know, opening work. And I can work with Sal's office if to uh, do the proper language to, uh, get it covered. And I, I know, Jeff, we talked about that, I think, in the past, like some of the calculations for the deposit fees and stuff were a little off, and yes. some of it were a little burdensome on, on individual homeowners or really just replacing a sidewalk or something like that. Yes. Yeah, and Jim, I think you mentioned before um, you wanted to beef up the, the portion of when they disturb the road, what they backfill it with for when there's not a resurfacing. Yes, we talked about also requiring what's called like flowable fill or uh, like a um, like a, a stronger backfill mix that doesn't settle as easily. That's good for some contractors that where you have those four by four openings in the road and then six months later, it's, you know, oh, six yeah. inches too low and you hit it with your car. And then that's something we can buff, beef up. That's what's, that's, what's, that's typical what's going on now. You see a lot of, you know, counties and other municipalities are now requiring that type of things. It doesn't apply to everything, but it applies to a lot. So we can add that in there. Yeah. Hey, Marla. Jim, just a quick question for you. So with the road uh, openings, you mentioned that, you know, if it goes, the project goes to like the, across the half line, yeah. do they just do curb to curb in that one section or is that just, you know, do they do the entire street? They'll do the entire street if they go across the center line. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, you know street from, from node to node, you know, they're not gonna like say for example, right. Brown, Brown, the brown is going to be fully resurfaced curb to curb, but just for example, if they went like over, they, they do the whole road. <laughs> I don't, okay. I don't want to make it confusing. Yeah, they do the whole road if they they go over center line. Got it. Yeah, I I think it's a great, uh, it's much credit to Jim for putting this together a year and a half ago. I remember us uh, discussing this. Um, you know, and we were all were like, wow, we get <laughs> a bunch of roads out of this for free. So I think everybody was happy. Um, so we're definitely, you know, this is, you know, the big picture of the four year plan that we put together 
uh, when I got started on council, when Gary was the council president, um, you know, we, we've been working at this plan for many years before I was involved. And this is why good planning works because we can, we end up getting this accomplished. So Jim, thank you very much for that. Um, I mean, uh, I just interject, Jim, you had also mentioned about fees and your letter talks about the application fee and the inspection fees. Are the council okay with those amounts? It was a $600 application fee and you had administration and inspection fees of 21,000. Yeah, yeah, they, they covered, we, the, the, the application fee is per the ordinance and the inspection fee is what we estimated based on what we're going to need, need to inspect once they actually do all the resurfacing and in the interim period while they're doing the, the trench repairs, making sure they stay stable. They've already agreed to pay it. And that will cover all of your fees, yeah? Yes. Yeah, you haven't paid for anything for us with any of the work that pec g or New Jersey American Water has done or will do. That's even better. pec g also posted escrow fees as well. So I hope that's should be good. That's, that's awesome. So uh, you're asking us to approve spending that we're not going to pay for, right? Yeah. That's, sure. It's the best, yes. easiest way to think of the day. <laughs> uh, so does council have any other thoughts or any questions for Jim? Okay, great. So Sal, do you want a resolution memorializing the three things here, the approval of the spending, the making them do the bond, and then the um, lifting waiving the moratorium on those two roads? Yes, please. Okay, so we're at resolution 28, correct, Jamie, I think? Yes. Okay, awesome. So can I get a, do I have to repeat that? As I, as I said, uh, this resolution 2021-28, uh, um, authorizing uh, Jim to move forward with this project in the amount of 21,000, authorizing the waiving the road moratorium on Fordham and Howard Street and uh, making sure that the utility company post a bond for the approval uh, for the repairs and maintenance. Uh, can I get a motion and a second, please? So moved, Tom Lyon. Second, Lynn. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell. Aye. Thank you very much, Jim. We appreciate it. Thank you. And I, I have to say thank you to New Jersey American Water and PCG too. They've been very cooperative and helpful and you know, they really didn't say no to anything. So that's great. Yeah, ab absolutely. And if, if you could, you know, work with Sal and, you know, maybe make a punch list of those ways we can beef up that ordinance, you know, so two years, three years down the road, they, they try to pull a fast one and, you know, they're not so kind or budget gets tough. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah, we'll do. I think that'll be be smart planning. All right, great. So next we have uh, this is late fees for various licensing. Uh, the memo from Jamie here. Um, Jamie, I'll let you jump in, but but just the background. Um, you know, at the time we waived the late fees for um, licensing, um, which was around March, and I, I believe it was mainly because of. Um, you know, this was right at the time when everything was shut down abruptly and, you know, council was of the opinion, and I remember, you know, folks had some concerns about they couldn't get in the office, they weren't aware of, um, you know, the late notice, and, you know, we, we, we agreed that it was kind of challenging, you know, on these businesses to impose these license fees, and especially the late fees, uh, when they may have not have been in the office, and we're just trying to to stay afloat in the midst of a, a global pandemic and an unprecedented shutdown. Um, so I think, Jamie, the question moving forward is do we want to still waive the late fees on licensing? Correct. Okay, so any thoughts from council after reviewing this? I mean, I have my thoughts, but I don't want to group think for everybody. How bad are we in, de in the delinquencies? Well, um, so far, the only um, licenses that we're um, in the process of renewing is the mercantile licenses. Um, so they're, they were due at the end of December, and there is a significant uh, portion of those that are still late. Now, so when, when, go ahead, sorry, Lynn. When will they need to uh, make good on the de delinquencies? Well, they're already... I mean, they're already delinquent, so they are hit with the $50 late fee. 
It doesn't just increase, to, so it remains at fifty dollars. Just to give you a little detail, um, we get about three thirty-three thousand dollars out of mercantile licenses, and so far, nineteen thousand six ninety-six has come in. So there's about thirteen thousand dollars out there still. That's late. Significant. Mm -hmm. How bad is it affecting you? I mean, it's not a big impact, but in the overall eighteen million dollar budget. You know, little, every little bit counts. <laughs> mm. Would there doesn't appear, it doesn't appear to have a large impact. I'm sorry, Tom. No, I was just curious if there would be a, um, we come up with a date that we waive the late fee, but then it has to be paid by like the beginning of the second quarter or, um, or do we want to just waive it all together? Um, I mean, $50, if, if I don't know if that makes or break a business, but it eventually has to get paid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jamie, can you just clarify for everyone because because I don't know off the top of my head. In the beginning of the year, do you send out notices like you need to reapply or resubmit your mercantile license? Like, can you just lay out the timeline? Sure. So right now we're only talking about mercantile because that's the process that we're in right now. So these notices go out mid October. And the fees are due by December 31st. Now, the mercantile licenses weren't really impact the, impacted the last time we waived them because, you know, they weren't due during that time frame. So we didn't waive the late fees during the last mercantile cycle. Um, but, yeah, we, I mean, we send them out mid-October before, you know, I would say beginning to mid-December, we send out reminder notices. And now, of course, we're sending out late notices. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, my thoughts sort of on it, you know, was that last, I remember last year that we did it was be, the reason we did it last year was because we literally everything was shut down, right? And there was concern, you know, we couldn't guarantee that people were getting the notices and it was just a turbulent time. I mean, even for me, not running a business, just, you know, trying to figure out what, what meeting I had or what class I had to go to, it was just a crazy time. So we all agreed, you know, it made sense to just you know waive the late fees moving forward because uh, that's that's you know if you have your mercantile license or whatever it may be dog license probably isn't your biggest concern in a global pandemic right it goes on the back of the burner uh, but you know now that we've been in this for almost a year unfortunately you know and there has been notices have gone out and businesses are back in operation um, i'm not really sure if it makes sense to to waive the late fees um, with with them having notices but you know i'm I'm more than happy to talk about it. That's just my my initial thoughts when reading it. Well, well late fees are designed to as a as a incentive to pay. And so if we were what if we were to extend a period of time that these fees would be due, not waiving the um, fee, you know, the uh, late fee, if they are late after whatever period of time, then they owe that. So there's still some leverage to get them to pay, say, three months from now or six months or whatever. Yeah, you know, council decides. Yeah, that makes sense. If, if you do that, I wouldn't. Go, I wouldn't go too far because you'll run into the next collection period. Right. And I think that want to make it at the end of the first quarter if, if you're going to extend it. And I think we. I remember we had that discussion last time because that was one of the the considerations, and that it was so close to that last quarter, we just waived the whole thing. Um, I see Gary shaking his head because he remembers that conversation. <laughs> I do. I do. Well, we would communicate this out to the um, to the people who owe us the money, right? So we could, if, if there is an extension, we can say what that would be. That remember we waived last quarter or whatever period it was, uh, late fees. So those late fees will not be uh, levied. However, after this period of time, late fees will be Levy. Something of that nature. What? Um, excuse me, if I could, Go ahead, if man. I could interject, um, Council President. I, I just was wondering if um, it'd be more appropriately named to postpone late fees and say, "Look, we're going to give you an extension on these," as opposed to waive them. We're not. Are, are you waiving them so that they're they're gone, or are you postponing them to a, a later date? Well, I, I think as uh, Councilman uh, Jenny suggests, it would just be, in essence, you're 
postponing the due date. You're moving the due date back right. so it wouldn't trigger the late fee. Got it. It's good old semantics, goes a long way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's that's a decent idea. I, I think that gives a little bit of flexibility, you know, to the to these communities uh, to pay, but also as uh, you put Lynn, you know, we still need, um, you know, the late fees there as an incentive. And, you know, also there's, you know, I remember discussing before, you know, Jamie or somebody has to process all of these late notices. There's cost to doing that paper time. So it's not that this is, is a free process to do. So that helps recover some of, um, some of that inherent process. Um, so we're not just charging late fees, you know, to, to pad the budget by any means. Should be goodwill with our uh, mercantile people. Yeah. yeah. Anyone have any additional thoughts? Yeah, Jeff, I, I, I'm sorry. Jeff, does April 1st, that would be the begin. they're due by April 1st or the late fees go in? Yeah, I mean, March 31st. March 31st, okay. Yeah, I was just going to clarify that too. I, you know, I think if we do it into quarter, I think that's uh, I think that's more than fair. I agree. So essentially, we're going to extend extend it one more quarter until the late fees trigger, right? It sounds like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I think that's a reasonable compromise where you know we're still allowing some flexibility for these these companies, uh, they have the extra notices that they got from Jamie. Uh, but then at a certain point, you know, we have to deter uh, folks from not paying and ultimately recoup the value of, of the township to, you know, go after these folks for delinquent uh, licensing. I, I think that's a, a reasonable solution. Okay, just one more thing. Um, I mean, I know we geared this around mercantile license, but do you want to do similar something similar for dog and cat licensing, or do you want to stick with mercantile licensing? I mean, I'm I'm fine. I I think it's easier just to go across the board and just okay. add the same extension to to everything. Uh, okay. The licensing gambit, you know, for this year, it's still still unprecedented as before. Um, okay. Council, have any any thoughts on that, or do we want to? create different timelines for different licensing. I'm sure our budget's not contingent upon dog and cat licensing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Um, all right, great. So uh, Sal, I think is gonna recommend the resolution. I think we could wait till next, till the public meeting, if you're okay, okay. with that. Um, I don't think we have to rush this through tonight. Okay, that's great. So we'll put that on next week's agenda. All right, great. Thank you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right. Next, we have a discussion about the open space tax. And I'm going to rely on the mayor a little bit for this. I know we talked about it a year ago uh, when you were council president, and we've talked about it offline. Um, you know, the Jeff may be able to explain a little bit better than I can, but we have a current open space that's going to sunset. Uh, Jeff, do you mind just giving a little background? Well, I'll give you a little history. Um, in 2004, uh, Township Council passed a, an ordinance to uh, take a referendum to the voters that was passed for an open space tax that was the fi a fixed amount, $325,000 a year. So in 2005, the Township Council passed a resolution to do a dedication by a rider, so um, to, to collect those funds. 2005 was the first year. And it was the sunset after 20 years. So it will sunset um, at the end of 2024 is the last year we'll be collecting that open space tax of $325,000. So, you know, the thought that we've, you know, at following the affordable housing litigation, um, you know, there was a significant impact on some of the open space or what may have been open space or could have been open space in the future. Um, so I remember, uh, you know, the mayor, uh, Mayor Cashbrone and I at the time discussed, you know, potentially putting this back up for referendum so the voters can have an option um, to read, you know, to put this back on the books so we can raise open space revenues for potentially 20 more years and, you know, maybe buy some open space 
um, around town. I've also talked with Jeff, you know, even if it's not about buying open space land, we can use it to preserve open space, improve open space, improve our Karen Park systems. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't just have to go to buying, buying land. Uh, we can use it on our current land and what we currently have on the books. Um, you know, so I, I think this is a, a great idea. The question is timing and if council is willing to do it. Um, Mayor, do you have- Just one, just one clarification. Um, that, that's correct, uh, Councilman Burrell. Um, the council in 2004, when it put it out to the referendum, there's a couple different ways you can do it. And theirs was probably the most um, uh, extensive or the least restrictive is you, you can do both acquire land and improve it. Some towns put it out that you could only acquire land. Um, this was pretty expansive in terms of what you could use those funds for. And I'm always of the camp of making it as broad as possible because you never know what <laughs> what's going to happen in 20 years. Um, but uh, Mayor, do you have, do you have any thoughts on this as, as we plan the future? Thank you, Council President. So yeah, you know the the, the thinking has been uh, we have had uh, we have had the opportunity to both use that to purchase and and use the projected income that was coming from that ordinance. Uh, to leverage it to purchase more space and open, uh, purchase more open space and preserve it or use it for uh, whatever was, uh, you know, most in need for the township. However, uh, that is going to sunset. We have we have used and you know with Jeff's help, uh, the you know the council has used uh, that leverage to get as much as we could get uh, in that a lot of time. But most of the projected income that's coming in now. Is, uh, is, is frankly accounted for, for the most part. Uh, so what this would be is a futuristic look forward of, of what we can still preserve. Every time that we have this discussion, there is less and less to preserve. And frankly, um, you know, I think if, if there's ever a time, it would be now to continue to do that, um, keeping this uh, discussion uh, governmental, uh, there has been an, an outreach um, uh, to myself and to others uh, on in this call or in this meeting that have indicated that preserving open space is a uh, is remarkably important uh, to the residents of Del Ran. So uh, we can only do what we can do with the money that's available. Uh, we can we can uh, use that leverage to preserve what we can preserve. But if we have the ability to project that there's going to be a long-term stream uh, of addition of income that would come in in order for us to do that, I think would be great. You know, I think we should be perfectly clear to say that this would not raise taxes. Uh, that open space tax could continue, and the rate would stay the same if we if we ask them to do that. The residents could certainly choose one way or the other. But it would be it would be a circumstance where it would continue at, at the same you know it would be the same input from the residents, but it would continue and give us all that much more leverage to really get serious about uh, what's left because what's left is becoming less and less uh, the longer this goes on. So thanks for the opportunity to uh, put my two cents in. Thank you, Mayor. And I think you know that's that's a great point about. Uh, we're borrowing essentially against this commitment for 20 years, you know, so the minute it's approved, you know, the bank sees that we have this income for the next 20 years and we can start to spend and borrow against that. So it's mm -hmm. not like we have to wait 20 years to build up a bank account to then use those funds. Right. And that's, that's what happened, frankly, in the past where they, there was literally nothing to leverage against uh, above and beyond what was projected. Now that we have some money in the open space uh, fund, uh, even if it is, even if it's, it's uh, committed, it's still there. And I don't, I'm not an accountant or, a, or, or an attorney, but to be able to, to project what's coming in and say, look, this is coming in yet, we can really push this forward uh, and preserve what's left because at some point there's going to be nothing left to preserve. And if you recall, I think it supports Number one, the master plan, the elements of the master plan also supports the surveys that we received during our campaign. One of the uh, top items was open space. 
And if we can use some of that money to improve the open space we do have, I think you'll even get more support. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, I, I, I think it's a no brainer, but uh, any other thoughts from council? Just a clarification. Great idea. Yeah, I like the idea as well. I just had a quick question. Is this so? Would this be a ballot initiative that we, we would be um, seeking to get, you know, the residents, uh, you know, vote on, or, or or is this something that we would do internally? It it was it was a referendum before, right? Okay. It, was, it would go to the to the ballot box. Got it. No, and and we can, you know, we have time. I mean, and that's why we wanted to bring it up. Um, you know, Sal, I'm not sure if you know off offhand, you know, how soon you know, how long it takes to get something on the ballot box. Um, if, if we want to, you know, there's a lot of questions up in the air. Do we want to do it this year? We have to discuss what rate we're talking about. If we want to keep the rate, if we want to raise it a little bit. Um, Jeff also mentioned in some earlier discussions, um, the council before chose that $300,000 figure. Uh, but I think the majority position is you choose a percentage or a rate that, so if, the tax rate goes up a year, it, it follows the tax rate. If the tax rate goes down, it, it's a percentage of the tax rate. Um, you know, so there's different ways to do this. So but by any means, we're not, you know, going to approve this and send it to the voting box tomorrow. Uh, it's just kind of get the temperature of council and then move forward and, and get the ball rolling. Sounds good. So, so Sal, is that something we can kind of take a look at and maybe plan for you know, the next election and figure out how we do that? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you, and it, it'll be on the general election. So it can only happen on the general election. So it won't happen during a primary or anything like that. So that if, if you're pushing it, I mean, I think if you're really being forward thinking, it would be this November's general election, which is, you know, 2021, which still gives you plenty of time. You could even defer it next year, 2022. Jeff says it's effective until 2024. So you, you've got a couple of years to, to work on it. In a normal pre-COVID world, it's a month long process and anywhere from three to six months coordinating with the superintendent of elections, getting on the ballot, crafting the language, et cetera, et cetera. So I would expect everything to be elongated now, but we literally have probably two, if not three years to get it done. Okay, great. Yeah. You know, and I, I think, you know, maybe we, we all think about, you know, timing of when we want to do this. You know, I think originally we brought it up right after the affordable housing litigation because, you know, there was, that was the, the topic of, of concern at the time. And, you know, open space was a key factor in all of that litigation and, and the resulting impact of that. Um, so, you know, there may be value in doing it sooner than later, uh, but also we do have a global pandemic. So folks may not be inclined uh, to vote yes, to keep, you know, taxes, you know, to essentially keep, keep paying more taxes. So, um, you know, I think it's something we should all think about. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get the view of council, see if it was something we were interested in. And, um, you know, we can slowly get that ball in the right direction. That's great. So Jeff, I'll probably work with you, you know, at some point we can do a, you and the mayor about projections or get some figures that would work for this, um, you know, or rate versus an actual an amount. Um, uh, but we'll take a look at that. All right. Yep. Great. Thank Any you. other thoughts on that? Okay, moving along. Uh, next, we have the PSC and G substation. I'm gonna let Jeff take lead on this uh, as they approached him with some information. All right. Um, PSCNG um, initially had a meeting with the invited, the one to have the mayor and, and a council representative back in December, along with the attorney. And we had a meeting with them concerning the um, location of a substation that they want to put in Delran. Originally, their email that they sent to us had three proposed locations, um, but they told us during the um, remote meeting that they were down to the one location, which was 130 Hartford Road, which is a uh, property that's uh, directly across from uh, kind of the entrance to Summer Hill. And they wanted to um, consider purchasing that property. 
and uh, putting in a substation, but they wanted to get uh, mayor and council's feelings about it uh, before they went forward with it. And they're back asking for a meeting because obviously Gary represented the council at the time at the meeting. Um, the mayor didn't attend and uh, Stuart attended. So I wanted to get it back um, to you guys uh, to possibly set up a representative of the council and the mayor and, and, and Sal to uh, set up a meeting to meet with them and, and try to get your input with respect to the location that they've provided for the substation. Well, In the agenda packet, I did give a, a shot of the uh, location um, from, uh, 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 from Earth. Uh, Google uh, Earth? Yeah, Google Earth. Uh, for you to take a look at it. I, and I know it doesn't give you a whole lot to look at, but um, that's essentially where they're looking at the property. Gary, you, you have any comments you were in on the conversation? Yeah, um, so so the, the site looks um, uh, pretty innocuous. I mean, it doesn't look like anything that's going to have a, a large impact on anything. It doesn't look like it's a high traffic situation. Um, and and you know they're in, what they're doing there once it's built is uh, is not much activity from what what I, I remember from the meeting. But most importantly, there's also a financial benefit to the township. Uh, Jeff, you'll have to refresh me on the numbers, but if you have them handy. But there was you know there as I recall, Jeff, the township gets something here. Yeah, I, we really didn't have a lock on the numbers at this point. Um, they didn't give us enough information to generate that. Uh, the other thing I, I, I did want to add that I missed is they do recognize they would have to come to the land use board um, to to present an application. And and again, it would it would it would keep from um, more housing stock coming into town. I mean, it's not a big property, but it's you know it's it's big enough that it would be. Uh, um, something that that you know could potentially have a couple of houses on it if it were to be redeveloped. Um, so so you know it, it felt like a good idea from there. It's certainly something that would uh, uh, not be hurtful, I don't think and I don't know you know people always find a negative, but uh, it sounded like it was a pretty good idea to me. Certainly there's more conversation to be had. A representative from council would would uh, need to be selected, you know, the obvious choice would be Tyler if, if uh, his schedule allows. And if not, you know, that's up to you, though. They do need a use variance in the zoning board. So I don't know how that. It would require that. Yeah. Yeah, they're aware of that. Yeah, I'd, I'd be more than happy to do that. I, Tom had a question and I had a couple of questions. There, there is a 130 Hartford Road, whereas like there's a property, it looks like a house with the landscape business is that the actual property they're talking about yes it is okay so it's not the property to the side of that where the high tension lines are they're actually looking at that piece of property that's correct and yeah, they, they it has sorry. to it has to sit next to a property that's adjacent to the high tension wires they're basically putting in like a big circuit switch uh switch uh circuit breaker okay so Currently, who who owns that mail? There's a mailbox, 130 Hartford Phil, Road. Phil Vella. There's, Phil there's Vella. a property owner that owns it, a private property owner. Okay. Phil Vella, he owns the landscaping company. Okay. So they are going to buy it from that individual? They would they would have to go to that individual and buy it, correct? So somebody somebody told me recently that Phil had bought a, a house somewhere else because he lives there in that mm -hmm. house. So he might be. Gotcha. So, so they, they would buy that property. And then what, Jeff, what is the conversation they want to have with council and the mayor just, just to make sure we're, we don't have any big objections to this? They, they want to make sure before they, they, they even start that um, there's not a major objection to the issue. Okay. Which is kind of weird since they need like a use variance from the zoning board. It's kind of know how, I don't know if, what your thoughts were. You know, like them coming, like unless they're coming to you, like for a rezone or like a redevelopment plan or study. I don't, I don't know what else it is you can do. They're not asking you to do anything. They okay. want to let you know 
that before they come into the community, they said they always notify the community and let them know before they're coming so that it's not a surprise or anything. And they just, they, they wanted to touch base. That was it. It's more of a goodwill gesture right. than anything else. Okay. How, how, far, how far back do you think it would be set, you know? Um, the way I remember it, Gary, and we don't have the actual plans, um, but it wouldn't go much further back than where the house was, correct? Um, uh, I mean, Generally, yeah, there, there's wetlands in the back there, so they, they would put it as far back as they can, but stay out of the wetlands buffer, so. And they're looking to buffer. I mean, they've got plans to put screening in and landscaping and things along those lines. That's what I was going to say. It's not going to be right on the street. But obviously, yeah. I mean, again, they have to go before the board, so they would address all that, but they have those plans, correct? Yeah, there's there's a there's a whole lot of uh, woods there, and uh, if they set back, they, you know, the further they set back, the better, but also you don't want to go too far back because then it backs up to some residents there. So hopefully um, uh, the plan that they present, if it get you know, if it gets that far to the, uh, I guess that would be zoning or plant, I think zoning because it's a use variance. Yeah, sounds like yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, if, if they would, uh, hopefully they would find something that would maintain the buffer between the houses behind it and uh, still, you know, have it not look like uh, an eyesore from the road. But it's, it's, it seemed to me like, unless it's, you know, we haven't really seen a plan. It was, it was a preliminary meeting. So it, it was just something that they wanted to take our, our temperature. And at the time, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of pushed to, we saw some more information. Uh, but it was, again, as, as uh, Tyler said, it was a, a goodwill gesture to kind of say, hey, look, we're looking at doing this. Um, I don't know, you know, the, the current resident, if they've struck a deal or not, but, um, you know, it has to be, if you have the, the picture that was included in the background material, it is right along the high tension lines, which is assuming where it has to be. Um, that's, that's, that's great. I know, I'm sure Tom, Marlo, and Lynn, this is, you know, you guys zoning board brains are going off back. You yeah. know, you guys could have a field day with this. <laughs> so we're not at a zoning board hearing, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'd be more than happy to represent council at a meeting with the mayor and Jeff, um, unless any other council members really have a burning desire. Um, but Marla, do, do you have a question? Yeah, actually, I had a quick question for Jim. Um, so, you know, is this substation, I mean, usually they, and again, use my day job as a, as a, you know, reference here. Is this like for a reliability issue that they're trying to correct? Or is there, you know, I'm just curious as to why they're trying to put this substation here, as opposed to, you know, a couple other sites that they had proposed. It's my understanding it is it's for like a reliability type issue. I'm not fully, again, I, I was on the meeting, but they really didn't go into, oh, they did, but it was really quick what, what it actually is, but it seemed like it was more of like a, not necessarily a substation where you're, you're changing uh, the voltage, but it was more of just ensuring that it had different switches and stuff like that to ensure reliability of that circuit. All right, because I, yeah, I I'm not yeah, a full electrician I, either. <laughs> no, nah, I, I get it because I know they recently, you know, built stuff all, all up and down, you know, Hartford Road there. So I just figured that might be part of it, but wasn't sure if that they came to the table saying that was specifically why they wanted to, you know, be, you know, close to the that particular uh, high tension wires. Yeah, well, we, we'll definitely get more information on the purpose, especially, I mean, if it goes to the board, I'll explain everything, but I don't know what they might provide the council to, for, uh, for their understanding before they do. If I could just interject, you know, um, we could have <clears throat> we could have two representatives from council. Uh, I know that it's actually would be in Tom's ward, but uh, uh, considering Marlowe's uh, day job and the background that he might have with that, you know, would it would it make sense? It would still not be a, a, a violation of the Sunshine Law because it would just be two council people. If he has availability, would it make sense to? to have Marlo join us in that, if it's possible for him to do that. As long as Marlo is okay with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and not stepping on Tom's toes. I'll, I'll defer to, to a better expert than me on that. <laughs> Don't worry, we already had Tom out there looking at the property this weekend, so. <laughs>
uh, for a couple steps ahead of them. All right, great. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Jeff and, and the mayor, if you guys want to set up a meeting, we can chat offline about availability. But um, you know, I think they need it for reliability, right? I mean, we want reliable power. As long as they're not going to build a skyscraper here, um, you know, I think we we sit down and see what they got to offer. All right. Sounds good. All right, we're moving moving along pretty quick till the old road program discussion. Jim, I think you're going to take the lead here and starting starting us off. All right, so yeah, this ties back into what we discussed before with um, New Jersey American Water and PCG. So typically, when we do road road program, we'll you know repave a road, and then before we do that, we fix. You're required to fix the handicap ramps to make them compliant with current reg per regulations. Plus, we usually fix driveway aprons to make sure they work with the new paving. Uh, and any other curb and drainage inlets that are in a state of disrepair that kind of hinders our ability to pave the road or is just completely, just completely uh, in bad shape that has to be replaced. So considering that all this paving is getting done by PC and G and New Jersey Mayor Water, the thought was that we go in in advance of them and for this year's road program and do all that concrete work that we would have done otherwise if it was just our own road program. So we, put, we looked at the, we scoped out the roads that they're planning to pave and we you know, came up with an estimate of what we would typically repair or replace before we pay. So that's the estimate I put together. Um, the total project estimate was about four, 415, 415,000, including salt costs. And that's usually around, I believe, and Jeff can confirm uh, about like half what you typically spend on a normal year for the road program. Yep. What yep. we've been spending. I mean, you're, not, you're not required to, but it's what you've been spending. So, I think that's the big question here, and and for the for the folks who just joined us on council, um, you know, some some quick background. You know, the Jim may be able to explain it better than I can, but you know, part of um, the issue is here is we normally don't adopt the budget until later in the year when we then sit and have this discussion, uh, and we have a firm number of how much we want to spend. Uh, but by the problem with that is by the time that happens. And we actually do all the paperwork and bonding to get the roads done. The roads, it's about winter time and you can't, you know, resurface a road in the winter. So the road doesn't get done effectively until the next year. Um, and we counsel for at least as long as I've been on there have found that to be unacceptable. So we've, we pretty much effectively put the uh, cart before the horse and we have this discussion early on as early as possible so we can get the road program done this summer Right, Jim, as you know, as soon as possible. Um, so you know, that creates a unique position where we need to rely on Jeff and the mayor here to make sure the amount we're going to spend meets the budget that's currently in draft. Uh, because what you know, we're going to be going, we're going to be going out for this money, and uh, you know, we can't really deviate from from it. Um, so you know, Mayor and, and Jeff, I mean, have you guys discussed? I mean, are we still on? On par to go with the current, you know, million dollarish figure we've been running for roads, or um, you know, how are we looking with that? Well, um, do you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and if, if you want to, to re-explain what I said, I've tried to articulate. No, no, that, that that was actually fine. I just want to make sure everybody knows a million a year is a lot. Um, the the town didn't used to do a million until the the most recent councils, probably the last six eight years, maybe prior to that, yeah. it was significantly less. So I don't want anybody to think you've got to get to a million, but um, it was a matter of council felt that it was a priority and wanted to get a lot of streets done and started undertaking it. And we've been lucky enough that bonding counts, our bonding costs were low, so it hasn't really impacted taxes. Um, and in addition to this four, uh, 13, whatever it is, you still, you also have to, um, you have a community development project that you would have to um, also authorize. So it's really gonna be a little closer to a little higher than 500,000. So um, you're at 500,000 now. Um, you're fine, you have uh, sufficient, need down payment money to be able to bond and you do have sufficient capital improvement fund money. We've been budgeting a significant amount of that every year so that you can continue to move on with your projects. If you do it early, you would have to do something similar to what you did tonight with the um, with the uh, Stewart Avenue project. Is 
to do a temporary capital budget because you won't have a capital budget until um, probably April or May when you do your formal budgeting. So you'd have to do a temporary capital budget and then do that bond ordinance. But you do have the capital improvement fund money and you're in the position to, to continue to do those roads if that's what you want to do. So if, if I can ju just jump in and explain that in English, because uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff obviously knows this stuff inside and out. And uh, sometimes we get, we get bogged down a little bit in, in the how to. Uh, so, so, you know, it's always been council's decision to decide um, how aggressive they, they want to be with the roads. I, you know, I'd remind you that I believe Conroe is still slated. That was, that is a uh, fully uh, grant driven uh, paving situation. I'm not sure about the soft cost, but um, so that end to end will be done, right? End to end, curb to curb, Conroe, is that correct, Jim or, or Jeff? You're, you just muted yourself, Jim. Jim, you're muted. Jim. All right. Yeah, that was funded last year. Right. And uh, and we'd be going out to bid, we think, uh, next month. So we'll get so, done this, that this. Regardless of what you decide with this upcoming year's road program, that is getting done this right. spring. Right. So, I mean, this this is this has been it's been very aggressive. You know, we've talked about um, a number of times talked about the uh, 40 miles of roads uh, that were in need. Uh, which is a ridiculous amount, um, uh, you know, in the catching up program. But you know, while the new roads aren't included in that count, the the, the approximate, you know, these are approximates because we're not measuring inch by inch. But the approximate forty miles of roads that needed to be repaved with this incredible PSE and G New Jersey American Water of uh, um, uh, agreement, and as well as the the uh, Conroe Road situation that was uh, that the, we got the grants for last year I believe in the year before um, we're talking about we're at, at about 20 miles right now so that's pretty pretty good for the for a 12 year you know a 12 year time span to get about halfway through to where we want to be so you know the now now is the is the council's decision to either take your foot off the gas a little bit for a year and let us catch our breath uh, fortunately because of of uh, Jeff's level of expertise and and his incredible experience in you know in our town, uh, he we were able to do that timing uh, when when a large amount of debt service came off the books, and and then go to permanent bonding, and you know knock wood the gods were smiling, uh, you know the the bond rates were pretty low because interest rates are very low. Um, so it, it became almost a, a, a net zero difference to get all that road. Help me, Jeff. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking at hundred percent dollar for dollar, but I'm saying that it was pretty close to something that, that, um, that was very helpful that everybody kind of pulled together and figured this out in the right way at the right time. So Absolutely. now we have to look at, that's all, that's all, it, give me a nod. Yes or no, Jeff. That's a, that's all permanently bonded now, right? All the prior years? Is that That's correct? correct. That's right. correct. And, so, and you have another year this year where your debt service will go down again right? this year. So so what we're saying is, you know, this is a kind of a necessary evil in maintaining these roads. And I, I encourage anyone who's not sure about why the commitment needs to be there is to visit some of our neighbors uh, uh, and look at the difference in the road the roads in, in our town and theirs uh, with no disrespect to any of our neighbors. But I think Delran is getting to the point where we're becoming, you know, the, the town that people are saying, you should see their roads. So, so I encourage you to, uh, you know, keep your foot on the gas. Maybe if you want to back off a little bit, we're at, we're at a spend of 500,000, maybe, you know, that, that, that million dollar number has fluctuated up and down a couple of hundred thousand uh, above and a couple hundred thousand below uh, for a number of years. So, you know, I think we look at the way we always do have a public works director, uh, uh, Jim, our engineer, and Jeff look at them and, and you know, they've always used a, a tiering system that says, these are the roads that are in need. Uh, these are the roads most traveled. Uh, you know, these are the ones that if we do them now, it'll be 
a lot less than if we wait two years because then it'll be a total reconstruction. So we always use their advice. Uh, and then um, we look at what's needed to be done. And really it's a level of urgency. And then we balance that with what, you know, what we have an appetite to spend on that particular road program. You know, we have, we have probably, I would guess the most aggressive year um, ever uh, happening this year in our, in our roads. Would you agree with that, Jim? I, you know, I, you've been with us for for twelve years or so, and and we've never done five miles of roads. I don't think. Uh, but you know, I, I would encourage everyone not to take their foot off the gas all the way, but to keep pushing on so that we can eventually get to the point where um, these roads are are mostly in good shape, and nobody comes. None of the the uh, residents come to you and say, "When are you going to pave my road?" Um, yeah, because so, there's still roads that need it. So sorry to get on, on the soapbox there. No, no, I think that's, that's all good, Mayor. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, I, I think, I mean, Jim, what, what are you asking from us? I mean, I, I think I'm looking here. I have a 2019 road list. You're like the graph you did of the different years and the, the estimates um, that you and the public works have, have moved forward with. I mean, do we think that we should do that for this discussion and then come back and take a look and see, you know, what options we have? I mean, assuming we're at half a million here, you know, then council can look at what needs to get done and we can decide, you know, do we want to, you know, spend 700 or do we want to go to 800 or a million uh, and see the puzzle pieces? Is that something we can do? Um, I, don't, I mean, do, do we need to make a decision moving forward? I mean, I don't think we have a list of the, the, the roads. Yeah, so so what is proposed right now is no additional roads that that's already being done by either PSC&G or New Jersey American Water. And the idea is actually to go in, because all that PSC&G New Jersey American Water do is, is paving. They don't do any concrete work. So we wanted to make the concrete repairs before they um, you know did the paving. Yeah. If the council did not want to do that and they wanted to actually do additional roads than what's already slated through PC and G New Jersey and water, then we'd have to go out and update that tiered list and, um, and, and, and give you guys, you know, what our recommendations for the next few streets that need to be repaved. Uh, and, you know, it'd be, it'd be good to under, have an understanding of how much you want to spend so we can know how we, how we can group them together. Uh, but I don't, I don't know when you want to make that decision. Yeah. I, I think that's what I mean. I, I, so there's a couple options. I think option one is we take exactly what Jim said here and we do the, um, the concrete work, right? And piggyback up off of the utility company. And we call that the road program for 2021. That yes. Is, yeah. Or option two is in addition to what Jim has proposed, um, you know, we add additional roads, however much that may be a hundred thousand to whatever we want on top of this. And I think that's Jim, that's your question is what do we want to do? Uh, yes, basically, yeah. And keep in mind too, because we are also going to have a, a, the 2020 road program contract going out this year. That's on hold because one of the roads in that contract is Baylor, and that New Jersey American Water is putting all new main down Baylor. So once New Jersey American Water puts all their main down Baylor, we'll have our contract out there and awarded for which would be also this fall, and that's Baylor front, a portion of Brown and Creek. So that those are getting done too this year. Uh, Baylor as part of that is, is getting water main. The rest are utilities or there's no utility issues. So, okay. So there's a lot going on this year, basically. If I could just, if I could just jump in for a second, ahead, Tyler. So, so I think what we need, what needs to be clear is that, that Jim is recommending and, and I believe rightfully so is recommending that this concrete work should be done um, in conjunction with what New Jersey American Water is doing and PSE and G so that, those roads would be completed the right way, the way we always do it, where with the concrete work that's necessary, and that's that's at least what we what what should be decided to do. And then if if there's emergency roads or there's something else you want to do or smaller roads or whatever, um, that that that's something that council should do. But he, I think what what we don't want to lose sight of is that that the uh, concrete work should be done if we're gonna do it the way we've always done it and what I believe is the right way to do it, to do that in advance of the road being paved. I got that right, Jim? Yeah, yeah that, you, you put it really well, thank you, Mayor. 
Yeah. Hey, Jim, Jim, can you touch base on one other thing? Touch base on the timing that's needed on the concrete work. Yeah, so it go, all goes down to New Jersey American Water. They want to start their main replacement in weeks. And that's going to take about one to two months. And then they come back and do their services, which takes about one to two months. And then they want to, uh, bottom line is PC&G and New Jersey American Water want to be paving this fall. Uh, and so and if, if we want to do this concrete work and ahead of their paving, we need a quick timeline to get it funded so we can get a contract out and get a contractor out this summer to do the work. So that, that's, an us, that's the other timing issue, why it's, we're bringing it to you now. In general. So we got to move pretty quick is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because we, we have to get the work done or else when we have, we don't want to push PCNG and New Jersey American Water off the, to the spring of 2022. Then, no, 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 no. You know, I don't, they, want, they don't want, they need to get the work done in this funding cycle too. So, so if you're going to make, um, if it's going to take longer to make a decision, you might want to bifurcate like your own program for roads versus this concrete work and kind of move forward with the concrete work first if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because otherwise think, we're not going to make the timing on that. Gotcha. Got, okay. So, I mean, I, I sort of echo what the mayor, uh, you know, referenced or implied at least in that. I think Jim's recommendation to do the concrete work makes sense. That's how we've we've always done the roads, and there's no point of, um, you know, doing these roads 50% of how we normally do them. You know, to save a few dollars, let's do it right, and then we move on from there. Um, I, I think. To me, that's just the reasonable, the, the prudent thing to do. Uh, does council have any thoughts on, on Jim's recommendation? Only then we can talk about adding roads on top if we want to do that. It absolutely makes sense to do the concrete work. I mean, it's just a, a sequence and it just, yeah. it makes sense. Totally agree. Lynn? Yeah, you're muted. I think you said. <laughs> You're muted, but I think you said yes. I did. Okay, great. And, and Virginia? Absolutely, we should do the concrete work yeah. as soon yeah. as we need to. Yeah. I, I uh, if I could just interject, I think that it's, I think that uh, Virginia's enthusiasm for paving half of Ward One in one fell swoop would probably be. I think she'd be voting yes for getting this all done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I think. We're all good with that. I mean, as Jeff re recommended, do we want to just move forward with this so we can get ahead of this? I think the priority is to get this done in the summer. We don't want to see this be a 2022 project. And then, you know, council can discuss, you know, in, in the next work session or the future, if we want to add anything on top of this. Uh, but I, I think priority should be to get this done. We don't want to drag our feet. Can I, can I go back to one thing that I said before too, though, is that um, you may want to add the community development block grant program to this. Um, you, you get reimbursed by a grant for that project. So it doesn't really end up costing you money, but we do have to raise the money in advance and then get reimbursed. Um, so you may want to add that to this project uh, because the timing on that um, is very similar as we, we sometimes run into, well, this year we had to get an extension because we got timed out of the grant. So um, we may want to add that to it. And like I said, it doesn't really end up costing you, uh, uh, may cost you uh, some money for professional services, but other than that, we get reimbursed for its totality. Yeah, I think I had on my paper, um, the half million dollar figure circled. So I, I think it's a no brainer to get it in because we know we're going to do it. Um, so it makes sense to throw it in the package and get it signed off. All right, so I think council seems to be, any other thoughts or questions on that? But I think council seems to be A-OK -okay with that. Agreed. OK, great. Agreed. And then, you know, I think maybe next work session, if, if we want, we can discuss if we want to do anything additional on top of this. I mean, I think that's kind of a broader question. I don't think we have to do that tonight, right, Jeff? You know? OK. Now we're good. Yeah, I don't think we have the information for that. Before the next meeting, I can refresh the list that we've had okay. out there and with everything that's gotten done so you can see what has moved up and what's next on the list. I already, I already know what it is. Yeah, yeah. I think if, if you could, because I'm looking at an old list and I, I, I yeah. you know, without cross-referencing all the list, it's hard. And then I think it'd be good for Lynn and, and Marlo to get kind of the, the picture of the list we're talking about. Uh, we pretty much have a list of uh, Jim kind of goes the next 
three years of mm -hmm. different roads and gives us some options and groups them together, uh, discusses kind of broad estimates for them so we can pretty much puzzle piece together what we want to spend for any program. Um, so yeah, Jim, if you could work with Public Works and the administration to put together a quick list like you have in the past, I think we can then uh, discuss if there's interest to do anything on top of this moving forward. Will do. Okay, Marla, did that answer your question? That, that's, yeah, you read my mind. <laughs> cool, awesome. All right, great, thank you very much. And you guys will move forward with that. So we'll get it done. Uh, this summer. All right. And last on our work session before the executive <coughs> is the community uh, solar. The discussion we had last two weeks ago uh, regarding 601 Delran Park Parkway. Um, you know, there, I, I was very impressed with the discussion with their solution, uh, what it's going to do for Delran. Uh, I, I, th I think it's a great, great model. The state is really you know, leading the forefront of that with this pilot program. I think it'd be great for Delran to be a part of that, um, especially with you know, some of the low and moderate income housing we have, these coming in the future, you know, those folks can get involved and, and benefit from solar um, energy sources. Um, you know, you know, I'd like to discuss it with council and see if you guys are you know, in agreement, we can maybe pass this resolution and give them the green light so they can move forward with the project. Anyone have any, any thoughts on her presentation and uh, community solar's plan here in Delran? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all on board with it. I think it's a good idea. Looks like it's a, a good plan and the people who potentially benefit the most will get what's at 50 or 51% of yeah. the, the crack at that, that uh, savings, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I really didn't. I looked for a downside. I didn't really, really see a downside for us. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And you know, this resolution just says we support the the program, and they're going to have to go in front of a, the land use board for the appropriate use variances and site plans and uh, whatever they may need. Um, so this is kind of just you know a goodwill gesture that we're okay with the project and you know welcome it in the community. So if, if there's no other thoughts, a motion to approve, uh, this would be resolution. Jamie, do you have the resolution number? It would be 2021-29. 29, I see it here. Okay. So resolution 2021-29, supporting solar landscape community solar project at 601 Delran Parkway. I have a motion. Motion. Um, second, Lynn. Jamie, do you want to call the roll? Oh, I'm sorry. Who who made the motion? Tom made the motion and okay. Lynn second. And Lynn second. Okay. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Resolution is passed. Jeff, do you mind reaching out to, to her? Okay. I love that, please. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. Sure, we'll be hearing from her. She's pretty on top of top of her deadline. Um, at this time, before we go into executive session, we'll have reports and then public comment. Uh, so first up, uh, our clerk Jamie Agers, any report? I have no report. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Next up, uh, our administrator Jeff Hatcher. Just one item: um, we had to uh, apply for the local uh, government emergency fund which was uh, funds for COVID related activities that the township undertook. I just wanted to report that we uh, have already received our check um, very promptly. Uh, we had submitted for 193,270. So that's gonna be a big help. A lot of that went to uh, reimburse uh, landfill fees that went up significantly by everyone staying home and cleaning out their houses. So uh, we did purchase quite a bit of equipment and PPE but uh, also we're able to reimburse some line items that um, were kind of hurting from uh, what went on. So it was, uh, uh, they were very quick in terms of turning that project, that, uh, that grant around. So that's it. Great news. I'm surprised it was that quick. <laughs> uh, next we have our solicitor, uh, Salvatore Siciliano. 
Uh, just a just a couple things. Uh, I, I of course have something for closed, but for the open session, we're uh, we're continuing our onboarding. I wanted to introduce Jennifer McPeak. She's also here tonight. So uh, some of you on council know Jennifer Johnson from uh, Days on Zoning Board, and Jennifer uh, Johnson from time to time will will be popping in, but primarily Jennifer McPeak as well. So name with a face and an email on the other end of the line. <laughs> Uh, her, her, she, we've been working on OPA requests. Jamie, there's something you sent over and pro processing that, but Jennifer will attest she's worked on that all day long and uh, she's, she's making a few, few, uh, a few comments on that. Aside from that, uh, Jeff, I did speak with the attorney on that particular donation of land late this afternoon. He called me, so um, it made him understand where we're moving forward with that. So uh, uh, we're, 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 mo we're moving forward, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly but surely. Okay. And then the, one, then the one item, of course, for closed. Great, thank you. And Jennifer, nice to meet you. See you, see you guys. Hopefully we'll see you around at some more meetings. <laughs> Sal, do you do you just hire people named Jennifer? Is that, is that <laughs> the way you work? You know, on the job, you know. Yep. You know if, you're not, if you're not Jennifer, no need to apply. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, and uh, next up from our engineering office, CME and Associates, Jim. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, there's a lot we went over already. The biggest thing I wanted to point out to you guys tonight is that uh, Conroe Road, uh, we're ready to go out to bid. Uh, we're, the last few things we're fitting, finalizing with uh, the county on that bridge that's over Swedes Run. The county is going to be doing some improvements as well. Uh, we're kind of like pairing up the project. So, you know, we work together to get the, the bridge is basically going to be improved. I don't know if anybody's aware of it. I discussed this last time, but there's only sidewalk on one side. So they're going to be rebuilding it on one side. The other side, uh, to put so sidewalk on both sides, uh, which is good because a lot of people walk to school there and they got to cross the road and then cross back, which will be eliminated. So we're just um, coordinating our plan sets to make sure uh, the work gets done. So that's going to be going out to bid next month. Uh, and then uh, there's obviously like, a lot of work you're going to be seeing, see going on with New Jersey American Water. Uh, and uh, the trail improvement should be starting next month. And uh, in, in, when I say next month, I'm March 1st, approximately. Um, the trail permits along uh, River Drive from Amico Island by uh, Burlington County. So the pre-construction meeting for that is actually next Wednesday. If anybody has any questions about anything else going on, just uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Thanks. Next up, we have reports from council members. So we're going to go in ward order. First, Ward 1, Councilwoman Virginia Pereo. No, tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, next up, uh, Ward, we're going to hold off. Tom, will Vice President, you get to go at the end. <laughs> next up, Ward 3, our uh, brand new uh, Councilman Marlo Smith. Uh, nothing to report tonight. Thank you. And next up, we have Councilman at Large, Lynn Jenning. Uh, Mr. Council President, no report tonight. You guys make it easy. Thank you. And Vice President of Council, Tom Lyon. Thank you, Council President. Uh, just real quick, stay safe. Um, the same old mantra, um, keep doing what we're doing and be safe, protect each other. Watch out for the children, especially now that they're back on the bus stops and whatnot, it's dark out in the morning. So let's be aware of our surroundings there. Uh, the other thing is have patience for one another. People are burned out with COVID, staying at home, not being able to go out. And I'm seeing an uptick of people that generally we're calm and whatnot they're on edge and whatnot so if we we don't know what somebody else is going through in their life or putting up with so we need to have patience for one another because this is getting we, we see the light at the end of the tunnel but we're not there so um, we need to have patience with one another and then the other thing is just the big thank you to all our public employees uh, for everything they do every day um, and hopefully they remain safe and keep us all safe so we appreciate everything we do. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Appreciate it. And I have no report this evening. So we're going to now go to our mayor, Mayor Katrenberg. Thanks. Thank you, Council President. So just a couple of quick uh, points. Uh, first, I have to say uh, congratulations to one of our Delran neighbors, Amber Kersey, who uh, we certainly know, uh, Bill Kersey. Uh, from the green team, but Amber recently wrote and published a children's book called Mighty Mina Mullen, You Are Loved. 
and it's a tremendous accomplishment to ever get published, but certainly in a crazy, difficult year like this. Congratulations, Amber. Uh, reminder that the Food Bank of South Jersey will be offering a drive up distribution Saturday, January 30th from 10 a.m. till noon. At, uh, that's at 695 Wood Lane Road in West Hampton. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly get some information up uh, on the website and social media. Uh, anyone in need of food or a food assistance, uh, it, it's going to be done very safely. You wear a mask, you keep the windows closed, open the trunk when you arrive, they'll put a box of food in there. Um, and uh, just please note, this is on a first come first serve basis. Uh, excellent job that the food bank does all the time. Uh, also, you know, the, the topic of discussion in a lot of homes is the, is the COVID vaccine. Uh, residents are... Uh, who are unable to access the online uh, COVID vaccine website. Um, uh, you would know that there's a hotline that you can call and that number is uh, 855-56, I'm sorry, 568-0545. Um, I'll repeat that at the end. So if you have any questions about eligibility, about pre-registration, uh, scheduling, the call center is open eight in the morning till eight at night. Uh, that's every day. Uh, including weekends. Uh, there's agents there, translators are available for non-native English speaking residents as well. That's 855-568-0545. And uh, finally, in, in uh, my effort to uh, kind of make us uh, more friendly from the website, I am methodically making my way through that, the uh, township website in a first pass, just to kind of correct and update uh, information that's either dated or missing um, or, you know, or anything that needs to be uh, corrected where I'm reading through it uh, literally page by page. Uh, we're updating all the pages, you know, trying to make there, there are so many services provided by the public works department that sometimes uh, we know what, what we mean and they know what they mean and they're doing it well, but it doesn't always make sense to a, a person who doesn't know uh, exactly what they mean by the scheduling or things. So I'm, I'm trying to get a first pass at least uh, that uh, would, would clear some of that stuff, you know, explaining some of the situations, trying to make it as much direct and not need to click three links to get to wherever. It's a big project, but uh, we're just kind of putting some time to that in hopes that uh, uh, you'll be able to find it more, more accessible and uh, detailed information so that you don't have to do that. You don't have to ask questions unnecessarily on a residence page, something that should be easily found um, right there on our website. Uh, so I'm doing that as quickly as I can, but it is, uh, it is uh, a time consuming, uh, but to do it meticulously as I've been trying, um, I had some help with some folks who were kind enough to review it and say, what does this mean? And uh, that's a kind of a red flag for me to say, we need to look at this and make sure it says what we think it says. So uh, that's happening. You'll see some changes throughout as, uh, as I continue to do that. You know, there's lots going on. Uh, keep, stay tuned. We'll keep you posted. And uh, that's my, uh, that's my report. Thank you very much, council president. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Look forward to the updates uh, to the website. There's always room to improve. Um, at this time, I think we, we went through everybody. We're going to, I need a motion to open the floor uh, to public comment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries and the floor is now open to public comment. Um, obviously we're not in person, we are over Zoom. so. For the attendees, uh, we ask that you raise your hand so we can identify you and um, unmute you so you can participate. If you are on a cell phone calling in, you can hit uh, star nine to raise your hand. Uh, if you're from an application, there should be a button at the bottom that says raise hand. Um, so if you could raise your hand, we will acknowledge you and uh, the floor will be yours. It looks like nobody's raising their hand. So I'll ask for a motion to close the, the uh, public comment. 
Motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the motion carries. The floor is closed to the public. And now we're going to ask for a motion to pass resolution 2021-25, a motion to enter into executive session to discuss uh, contract discussions and litigation. Take it a motion. Motion. Second. Virginia, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those who oppose and the resolution passes, we are now going to go into executive session. Uh, Jamie sent around the, the uh, link or the uh, number for the executive session. So everyone will close out of this meeting, head over to that. Uh, for the public, we will be back once we are done our executive session, all action will be taken in this meeting in front of the public if there is any action to be taken. Uh, so hopefully we'll be back shortly and I'll see everybody in the executive session room. Oh God. Can I get All the right. routine down? <laughs> All right, we'll call the uh, meeting back to order now that everybody's here and there has been no action uh, no need to take any action from executive session. So all we need is a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Be well, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Good evening. Bye.